Hi, welcome to Crochet University, and today I'm going to show you how to do the end stitch. We'll start this video first with a review of the stitches that you'll need to make to build the end stitch. Two, we'll learn the end stitch itself. And three, for those of you uh, who are open-minded, lifelong learners of crochet, and you want to delve in a little deeper, I'll show you the difference between stacked end stitches and staggered end stitches. So let's get started. So you want to build your end stitch pattern on an even number of stitches. I have 16 chains here, so I'm going to chain 17 to go up for the beginning of the foundation row. And then I'm going to work my single crochets into the back bump of the chain across. All right, so we've worked our single crochets across the foundation chain and we have an even number. So I have 16 here. So if you're a complete beginner, I'm going to suggest that you do one row of half double crochets and then one row of extended single crochets so that you get the hang of those stitches. So I'll show you how to make those now. If you already know how to do those, you can fast forward through the video until you find the part where I teach how to make the end stitch itself. Okay, so I'm going to chain one and turn the work. Unlike some traditional patterns, I do not chain two and skip the first stitch. I chain one and starting in the first stitch, we're going to make a half double crochet. So you take a yarn over you insert the hook, you take a yarn over, and you pull up a loop. For a nice, neat half double crochet, you want the three strands to slide nicely on the hook. You don't want that first one to choke or to be so tight that the hook doesn't slide easily. You also don't want it to be so loose that you get this kind of a loosey-goosey look on that first loop. So you want it to be snug enough so that it's neat and tidy, but so that the hook still slides. Yarn over and pull through three. That's one half double crochet. So now we're going to go in the next insertion point. Yarn over, insert the hook, grab the yarn, pull up a loop. Make sure that they're tidy and neat. Yarn over and pull through three. Okay, so continue practicing with half double crochets across. Okay, so we're approaching the end of the practice half double crochet row. So I just have three more to do. So just take a look at the, found the base row, or the previous row that you're working into, and you'll see I have this stitch left, that's one, two, and then the third one at the end sometimes can get a little tricky. When I look at my crochet fabric from the side that I'm inserting the hook, I can see the dimples where the hook goes, but when it comes to that last stitch, that dimple is often hidden or curled over around to the back and you can't see it. So this is often where people uh, start uh, missing or skipping stitches that they should have worked and you lose your rectangular shape and you lose stitches as well. So I'm going to make three more half double crochets. Yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over and grab yarn, pull up a loop and pull through three. In the second to last. Okay, for this last one, I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to kind of force this to curl over my finger so that I can find both strands and then yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull up through three. And there is my last half double crochet. Okay, chain one. 
turn like the pages of a book, and I'm ready to practice a row of extended single crochet stitches. For extended single crochet, you, you insert the hook in the dimple, in the space where you want to go. I'm going to have two strands on from the, the stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, the normal single crochet, at this point, you'd yarn over and you'd pull through two. For an extended, we have to add that extension. So what it is, is to chain one. So you yarn over and pull through that first loop. And then you yarn over and you pull through two, and there you've extended it by one chain. So let's try that again. I'm going to look. The next stitch is right here. Here's my two strands that form that V. I look for the dimple of the side of the fabric facing me, and I insert the hook there. Yarn over, pull up a loop. I'm going to extend it with a chain. Yarn over, pull through one strand. And then I'm going to finish the single crochet. Yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so just do a practice row of extended single crochets all the way across. Insert hook, bring up a loop. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, I'm right near the end of my practice row of extended single crochets. You can see that they look a little bit different than the regular single crochet because you can see very neatly the two little V's that form the legs. And then there's an extra couple of bumps of yarn before you get to the top double strands of the, of the stitch. Okay, so here we are at the end of the last two stitches of the previous row. You can see there's the two strands of that one. And again, when you're looking at it from the side of the fabric, this dimple is easy to see. This one is a little bit squished and closed. And depending on how tight you crochet or on the fuzziness of your yarn, you might not be able to see the stitch at all. It might kind of curve over to the front like that. So you just need to kind of tilt the fabric toward you so that you can see both strands of that last stitch. Okay, so here is an extended single crochet and into the last one, go under both strands, kind of have to lie things down. And there is a row of extended single crochets. All right, so now we're ready to move to stage two, which is to make the end stitch itself. Here is my swatch of end stitches, and this is the right side of the fabric that I'm showing you so that you can see the diagonals made by the little ends. So, but you can see across here that I just finished working across the wrong side of the fabric, and that was a row of single crochets. So there's always one row of single crochets in between each row of end stitches. And by the way, this is the wrong side of the end stitch fabric. To me, it looks a little bit like H's. <laughs> there's the two strands and there's the crossbar in between. But I couldn't give it two different names, so we'll just stick with the one. Okay, so now I'm back on the right side of the fabric and I'm working into single crochets that were the previous row. I chained one and they, for the edges, I either do one or two half double crochets. I'm just going to do one half double crochet on the edge. That also means that when I get to this end, I'm going to do another half double crochet there for that edge and just have end stitches going across. That's why the even number of stitches works out this way. Okay, so for the end stitch, we're going to be working into two stitches. This is the first one, and this is the second one. We're going to skip the first one and make a half double crochet under these two. Then we're going to rotate the fabric and turn it a little bit like a 90 degrees, 
and we're going to insert the hook in the front loop only. So I'm not going under that back loop. You won't even be able to see it actually. We're going to insert the hook from top out through the bottom. And then we're going to continue with working the extended single crochet. All right. So we'll skip the first stitch and work a half double crochet into the next. Then we're going to rotate the work, insert the hook from top to bottom under the front loop only. And then you can rotate back again. Yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one for the extended single crochet. And then that's, as you can see, is forming the diagonal strand. But now we need to form the leftmost up and down part of the end. So I'm not going to finish this single, the, the extended single crochet off. Instead, I'm going to yarn over, go back into that second stitch where I had worked the first half double crochet and yarn over and pull up a loop. So now I have four loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all four. And there is a completed end stitch. So again, the next end stitch is going to be worked over two stitches. Yarn over, half double crochet in the second one. Rotate the work, insert the hook from top to bottom in the front loop only, and work the first part of the extended single crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one. Then I'm going to finish with a half double crochet back in that same second stitch. So now I have four loops and pull through. And there's my second end stitch. So basically, I'm going to skip one, go in the second one, and make a real half double crochet. And then I'm doing a blend of a extended single crochet, half double crochet together. From top to bottom, front loop only, yarn over, pull up a loop chain one, two loops on hook, yarn over, go back into that second stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all four. And there's another end stitch completed. So now you continue making end stitches across and if you started with one half double crochet, you're going to end with one half double crochet as the edge stitches. Okay, so now I'm going to do one in very slow motion. And here I am at the end. I work one half double crochet, making sure I go under both strands of that last stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. So you can see again, there are all my diagonals from my end stitches. I'm going to chain one and turn. And now I need to work a row of single crochet across. 
So I'm always going to go under both strands of each stitch across. If you look for the insertion points with the flat part of the fabric facing you, the one dimple is easy to find. The one that we kind of joined the extended single crochet mixed together with the half double is a little bit trickier. You might have to pull things down a little bit to find the right insertion spot. So that's row two of the end stitch pattern. So for those of you who'd like to dig in a little bit deeper, I'm now going to show you the difference between stacked end stitches and staggered end stitches. So on this swatch, these are all stacked end stitches. If I take a piece of card on both sides of my little ends, you can see that the diagonal lines go up in a column. So these are stacked because I put the ends one on top of each other. If I get this card, you're going to notice that the diagonal that's here and it ends kind of like with a little hole here. If I go up one, there's not a full diagonal and the hole is kind of in the middle because the diagonal is off to the side here. And then I go up one row and the diagonal is back on top of this one down from below. So let's look at this in a diagram. Okay, so here I have my end stitches and on either side with this T symbol, that is the standard symbol for a half double crochet. So I have my two edges, each one is a half double crochet, and then I have my ends. When I work back, I put a single crochet in each top of the end and in each half double on either edge. So those little X's are the standard symbol for single crochet stitches. So I work across, there'll be an even number. Then I work a half double crochet. I'm going to draw a symbol for a chain, which is a little oval. So I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to work a half double crochet and then I'm going to work end stitches across and with this chain one and now I'm going to single crochet across. So as you can see, my ends are all getting stacked one on top of the other. If I put this needle and this hook on either side, you can see how they're stacked. So for a staggered pattern, you're going to have your end stitches with the border. And now we're going to stagger the placement of the end. So this time, my ends are going to get put, oh, I forgot to put my row of single crochets in there. Do that first. Okay, so now, working into those single crochets, I'm going to put my other ends. Okay, what this does, however, is it leaves two on either end to work half double crochets into. So every other end row, you'll have two edge stitches. And then we're going to single crochet back across. Chain one, work one half double crochet, and we're going to end and stagger them again.
Okay, so what you'll notice in the fabric is that the diagonal lines will be a little bit more broken up than when they're, stag when, than when they're stacked like this. When they're stacked also, the little dimples from where you worked two half double crochets into the same spot are always lining up as well, whereas in a staggered one, those dimples zigzag back and forth. But the texture does look different. If you switch halfway between all stacked and you switch to staggered, it's going to show up from a distance and it's going to look like you have a, a weird stripe or a different dye lot of yarn in your, in your crochet fabric. So it's just important to be careful to either keep them lined up stacked all the time or stagger them all the time. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to crochet the end stitch. And I hope to see lots of baby blankets, cushion covers, and even more inventive projects that you crochet using the end stitch pattern. Please subscribe and activate the little bell notification so that the next time I post another new crochet stitch or a podcast, you'll be able to watch the video. Thanks a lot.